Let's talk about another addition reaction, also known as the halogenation of alkenes, that works specifically with chlorine and bromine, not so much fluorine and iodine because fluorine is too reactive and iodine is too unreactive. So in this case we have bromine, Br2, along with carbon tetrachloride. Bromine adds across the double bond in this pentene ring, but it, the bromines add trans to each other. That means one bromine is coming towards us and one bromine is going away from us in three-dimensional space. Or you can say they add on different sides of the double bond. Notice in an aliphatic chain the bromine adds across the double bond but this time it is not the trans configuration. Another addition reaction that we encounter in the preparation of alcohols is hydroxylation of alkenes where we have osmium tetroxide and a base adding across a double bond in a ring to give us one two vicinal diols. I say vicinal because the OH groups are on carbons in the vicinity of one another or they are neighboring or adjacent to one another. Notice that we also have syn addition where the OH groups are either on wedges or dashes and we have a mixture of both but mainly they are either coming towards us or going away from us in three-dimensional space or you can say they are adding across the same side of the double bond. The final addition reaction of the day involves a conjugated diene. A diene is said to be conjugated when we have two pi bonds allylic to one another. That means the pi bonds are one carbon away from one another. In this reaction specifically we have bromine along with dichloromethane at 20 degrees Celsius to give us two products, a mixture of two products. The 1-2 addition where Br adds 1-2 and the 1-4 addition where Br adds in the 1 and the 4 position in the aliphatic chain. Let's talk about another class of reactions entirely called electrophilic aromatic substitution or EAS. Electrophilic as in something that is electron deficient at the same time electron loving electrophilic. Aromatic because there's an aromatic ring involved and substitution because something is getting substituted for something else. In this case a hydrogen for a bromine. And this takes place in the presence of a Lewis acid iron bromide which is also an electron acceptor. So what it essentially does it, it splits off the Br2 and one of the Br's becomes slightly positively charged or electron deficient or an electrophile and that electrophile is get substituted on this ring to form this product. Similarly, this reaction is known as bromination. Similarly, we have EAS reactions for the other halogens, fluorine, chlorine and iodine. But these take place in the presence of, of different reagents. In the case of fluorine we have select fluor. In the case of chlorine we have chlorine 2 uh, and uh, aluminum chloride which is also a Lewis acid and for iodine which is called iodination we have peroxide iodine and H2SO4. The same thing happens is the the fluorine, chlorine and iodine uh, split off and one of them become the electrophile which is substituted on the ring in iodine, as I said, we have iodination. In chlorine, it's called chlorination. And in fluorine, fluorination. Moving on to the next kind of electrophilic aromatic substitution. This one is called nitration, where we start off with a benzene ring and we end up with a nitrobenzene. This takes place in the presence of sulfuric and nitric acid, but in this case, sulfuric acid is actually the stronger acid. So nitric acid acts as a base and splits off into an OH and an NO2, and the NO2 is what gets substituted on the ring to give us our nitrobenzene. Our next form of electrophilic aromatic substitution is called sulfonation, 
where we start off with a benzene ring and we end up with benzene sulfonic acid. This takes place in the presence of concentrated fuming, because there's heat involved, sulfuric acid. And if we want to reverse the reaction, that means if we want to get our benzene back, we just add dilute sulfuric acid to our benzene sulfuric acid. Our next form of electrophilic aromatic substitution is called the friedel crafts reaction, which takes place in the presence of a Lewis acid, in this case aluminum chloride, where we have a tert-butyl chloride adding to a benzene ring to give us the tert butyl group becomes the electrophile and gets substituted on the ring in the product. This is um, the famous Friedel Crafts reaction, an example of EAS electrophilic aromatic substitution. Let's move on to substitution reactions. This one is in the presence of a Gilman reagent. And whenever you see Gilman, remember organocuprate. There's copper and there's lithium involved. In this case, there's a dimethyl group. And one of the methyls from the dimethyl group is getting substituted on the ring. The Br leaves and one of the methyls comes in in its place. And our other products are lithium from the Gilman reagent reacting with the bromine and the one of the methyl groups reacting with the copper. So this is an example of a Gilman reaction. Another group of substitution reactions that I'd like to cover are SN2 substitutions. That means they happen in one step. Um, the two reagents that I would like to cover are phosphorus tribromide and thionyl chloride. OH groups are generally not very good leaving groups, but in the presence of these reagents, they do leave and are substituted with a Br, and in this case a Cl, as you see here, um, with inversion of stereochemistry. That means um, if we had our OH group coming towards us in three-dimensional space, we have our Br group now pointing away from us in three-dimensional space. Uh, the same for the OH group. In this case, we have our OH on a dash, that means going into the page, and we have a Cl on a wedge, that means coming into us. Two more flashcards on elimination reactions. Remember, elimination reactions are reactions where you have one in the reactants and two in the products. This is an example of alkene synthesis from the dehydration, that means the loss of water from alcohols. Notice that we have a primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohol in the presence of concentrated acid and heat. So essentially, the OH group leaves and the electron density remains and gets passed on to give the corresponding alkene in each case. Notice the primary alcohol gives this alkene, the secondary alcohol on a ring, this is the corresponding alkene, and the tertiary alcohol, this is the corresponding alkene. This uh, is an example of alkene synthesis from the dehydration of alcohols. Our next elimination reaction deals with a bulky base, sodium methoxide, adding across a secondary, could be also a tertiary alkyl halide to give us an alkene. This is called the dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halides, specifically secondary or tertiary alkyl halides, to give us alkenes. So the Br group leaves, the electron density transfers over to the neighboring carbons, giving us this pi bond and resulting in the alkene. Also, the other products are sodium bromide and methanol. Dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halides to give us alkenes. The last group of reactions that I would like to emphasize are reduction reactions in the preparation of alcohols and also one more reduction in the preparation of amines. Um, but let's start with the preparation of alcohols. Here we have a ketone attached to a ring that also contains a double bond that is reduced to a secondary alcohol. And remember, ketones are always reduced to secondary alcohols. But this especially needs to take place in the presence of lithium aluminum hydride, which is a very, very, very strong reducing agent. Ethanol 
zero degrees Celsius along with an acid workup. Remember, ketones to secondary alcohols in the preparation of alcohols. The next reduction reaction in the preparation of alcohols is with an ester. Remember, we have to use, again, the very, very strong reducing agent, lithium aluminum hydride, along with ethanol and an acid workup. But this time, an ester yields us a primary alcohol. Ester to primary alcohol in the preparation of alcohols. Our next reduction reaction in the preparation of alcohols is using a carboxylic acid. Again, we need lithium aluminum hydride, the very strong reducing agent, and the same uh, other conditions of ethanol, zero degrees Celsius, and an acid workup. And gives us, again, a primary alcohol, same as an ester. The next reduction reaction in the preparation of alcohols is using aldehydes and as we saw before, ketones, the only difference is this time there's no double bond in the ring. Um, so aldehydes get reduced to primary alcohols and ketones to secondary alcohols as we saw. But this time, we don't have to use the very strong reducing agent, lithium aluminum hydride. We can use sodium borohydride, methanol, and an acid workup. Um, these conditions are sufficient to yield us primary alcohols from aldehydes and secondary alcohols from ketones. Our last reduction reaction is not in, in the preparation of alcohols but in the preparation of a primary amine where we again use the very strong reducing agent lithium aluminum hydride ethanol and uh, an acid workup but this time we're acting on a nitrile group and the nitrile group gets reduced to a primary amine. Remember, reduction is just the addition of hydrogens.